Welcome back, Kings fans. It's Matt Murray from LifeInHockeywood.com. It's been a brutal week for fans that have been following the Ilya Kovalchuk sweepstakes, so there's no better place to start than the beginning. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Coming into the week, it sounded like Kovalchuk and the Kings were finally close to a deal, and that all that was left were the final details. And instead of wondering where Ilya would eventually sign, Kings fans were debating which number he was going to wear. Then on Monday, Jay Grossman tweeted that Kovalchuk was indeed ready to make his decision. Right, like we've heard that before. And then the bombshell. Despite all the analysis from alleged insiders, so-called experts, nerdy number crunchers, and talking heads, Kovalchuk chose the devils. Inconceivable! It was announced that Ilya Kovalchuk had agreed to sign a 17-year deal worth $102 million with the New Jersey Devils. Inconceivable! Later on, it was revealed that the Kings' offer was only about $80 million at 15 years. Inconceivable. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. That being said, you can honestly say that this was all about the money. Which is fine. You can't fault a man for making what someone's willing to pay him. Hell, I like to have that kind of job security. 17 years? In the newspaper business? In any business? Where do I sign up? Monday left many Kings fans scratching their heads wondering, what now? After all, this had been an 18-day ordeal that finally seemed to be going the Kings' way. And like that, he's gone. On Tuesday, salt was applied to the wound when the Devils rolled out their newest prized possession out for a dog and pony show. And everything you'd expect from a player that just got paid. Kovalchuk smiled uncomfortably, smirked about playing when he was 44, but then some things started coming to light. Devils general manager Lou Lamarillo later admitted that he didn't think that contracts like this should belong in the NHL. When asked why did he sign Kovalchuk if he felt that way, Uncle Lou responded, quote, you'd have to speak to ownership about that, end quote. Implying that basically it was ownership that was a driving force here and not common sense. It was a bitter pill to swallow. After all, he was so seemingly tantalizingly close. He was within our grasp. Turns out that the two sides weren't as close as believed. Later, Tuesday night, Kings fans did get a little retribution. A report came out that the league had rejected the contract, claiming it had circumvented the collective bargaining agreement. It seems the league didn't buy the thought that this 27-year-old Russian would be playing until he's 44. Never mind they had approved similar lengths of contracts with Marion Hossa, Chris Pronger, and Alexander Ovechkin. So now the contract has been voided and both sides may be forced to renegotiate. The team says there's no plans to challenging the league ruling, leaving it to the Players Association to fight for Kovalchuk. What does this have to do with Kings fans, you might ask? Well, turns out Rich Hammond reported that Dean Lombardi said, Quote, the Kings would be interested in signing Kovalchuk should the opportunity present itself, end quote. He does go on to say that the Players Association would probably get involved in this whole mess. Look, I don't want to come off sounding better, so allow me to say this. Ilya Kovalchuk is not coming to the Los Angeles Kings. In my opinion, the Kings now have the flexibility to lock up their other core pieces, such as Drew Doughty, Jack Johnson, and Wayne Simmons. And even though the $80 million contract sounds like chump change compared to the Devil's End game, that's still a lot of scratch. That would have seriously hindered the Kings in the long term. And who knows, maybe the league would have stepped in and avoided Lombardi's contract. So now Kings fans will just have to sit and wait to see what Dean Lombardi's next plan of attack is. Personally, I'm glad that this whole thing is over. I can now go on to worry about what's important, like trying to figure out how to convince my wife to let me go to Las Vegas for Frozen Fury. For life in Hockeywood.com, I'm Matt Murray. Let's go, Kings. No more rhymes now, I mean it. Anybody want to feel it? Yeah!